Hi viewers, welcome to GRS Learn Life Sciences. Uh, in this video, I am going to explain the general characteristics of polyketa. Poly means many, keta means bristles. So many number of bristles are present on the surface of uh, their body. So in this group of organisms, so many number of uh, bristles are present on their body. Let us now discuss the general characteristics of the class polyketa. So coming to their habitat and habit. So polychaetes are completely marine organisms and they are carnivorous organisms. That means they eat protozoans and uh, diatoms uh, as uh, their food. And we know that annelids, so most of the annelids, that means uh, 3 by 4th of uh, annelids are completely, they live in water. So 3 by 4th of annelids are completely, they live in the water and 1 by 4th of uh, annelids, they live on the terrestrial lands. In this 3 by 4th, some they live in the marine waters and some they live in the fresh waters. And coming to these polychaetes, they are completely, they are marine living organisms. So that is their habitat coming to their habit so they eat other animals as their food so that's why they are called carnivorous organisms next uh, let us see the external morphology of the polychaetes in external morphology first we are going to discuss about the body coming to the body body is uh, an elongated uh, and a segmented body so the length of the body is uh, more than its uh, width so body has more length than its uh, width so this kind of body is called elongated body and also the body is uh, segmented so the totally completely the body is uh, segmented from its anterior to the posterior so this kind of body is called elongated and segmented body next uh, let us see the head part of the body so coming to the head part of the body so the head has a prostomium and peristomium so it has two segments they are called prostomium and the peristomium so two segments are present in its head apart from this prostomium and peristomium the head also has two pairs of eyes so it has two pairs of eyes and also tentacles and other structures are present in the head part of the body next uh, the parapodia and setae the lateral structures the lateral structures of the body are called the parapodia parapodia structures that are present on the lateral sides of the body are known as parapodia so this uh, uh, fleshy structures that are present on the lateral side of the body are called parapodia and uh, numerous number of setae are present on this parapodia since so many number of setae are present on this parapodia these groups of organisms are called uh, polyquids next is clitellum this clitellum is present in some organisms only during their reproduction period and in some organisms this clitellum structure is permanent so it is present throughout the life of the organism in some annelids this clitellum is not even present during the reproduction or it is not uh, present throughout their life so this clitellum is completely absent so in polychaetes this clitellum structure is completely absent and this clitellum is uh, helpful for uh, making the cocoons during the reproduction so these are the external morphological features of the polychaetes. Now let us see the internal anatomy of these polychaetes. Coelom. Coelom is a true coelom is present in annelids. So the coelom is uh, developed by the splitting of uh, the mesodermal uh, tissue. So the mesodermal tissue develops the coelom in the polychaetes and uh, this coelom is a very uh, spacious cavity present in the body and uh, this coelom is uh, segmented uh, by the intersegmental septa so the intersegmental septa which separates uh, the segments from one another 
due to this uh, intersegmental septa the coelom is also compartmentalized in uh, polychaetes then coming to the germ layers so three germ layers are present on the body of uh, these polychaetes uh, so that's why they are called uh, triploblastic organisms next uh, the alimentary canal then coming to the is alimentary canal so they have a complete uh, alimentary canal that means it starts with the mouth and ends with the anus and mouth is present in the second uh, segment of the body so first uh, segment is called a uh, prostomium and the uh, second uh, segment is called a uh, peristomium so the peristomium has a uh, uh, let me show you the prostomium and peristomium here so the first uh, segment is here called the prostomium and second segment is here called the peristomium so the mouth opens in the second segment that is called peristomium and the last segment of the body is called a uh, pygidium so here you can see this is the pygidium so this anus opens in this uh, pygidium so it has a complete alimentary canal so then coming to the buccal cavity and pharynx so the buccal cavity of the polychaetes is a eversible buccal cavity so it comes outside of the mouth uh, in order to take the food from the water so it is a eversible buccal cavity and uh, the pharynx is also is a protrusible pharynx which comes outside out, out of uh, the body that means out of the mouth in order to take the food this is about the elementary canal next uh, the respiratory system or the respiratory organs so the respiratory organs of uh, these polychaetes uh, are the parapodia so here you can see these are the lateral uh, structures of the body wall so these uh, prominences are called uh, the parapodia so as the blood capillaries are richly supplied to this parapodia so this parapodia are uh, completely they are exposed to water streams so the water which contains uh, the oxygen so it uh, flows over this parapodia so during this process we can see the exchange of uh, gases between the parapodia and also between the water so this parapodia are helpful for the respiration in the polychaetes next the excretory system coming to the excretory system so they have a nephridia as a excretory organs and these nephridia are present in each segment they are present in each segment so they are segmentally so they have segmentally paired nephridia so in each segment uh, we see a pair of uh, nephridia in this organisms next uh, the reproduction coming to the reproduction so sexes are here separate so we can find here male and uh, female organisms uh, separately so fertilization is uh, external so the males releases the male gametes and female releases the female gametes uh, they are released into the marine waters and there the fertilization takes place next coming to the development so after fusion of this male and female gametes in the marine waters they don't directly become into the uh, young organisms so instead of that they produce a larva so that larva is called trochophore larva so trochophore larva is present in uh, in the life cycle of uh, polychaetes and uh, this trochophore larva has it has the cilia you can see here so it has the cilia on its uh, body so they can swim in the water for some period of time so this is how the reproduction takes place in this organisms by sexual means also by the asexual means it uh, reproduces uh, by budding process so by budding asexual reproduction takes place in the polychaetes next let us see the orders of this uh, polychaeta so it has two orders it has many two orders they are called uh, erancia and uh, the sedentaria and examples for erancia are neris aphrodite glycera polino and cilis and uh, for sedentaria Ketopteris, Terbella, Sabella, Arenicola, Serpula, Amphitrite, and uh, Spirobis. So these are the examples for the sedentaria. And let us see the differences between the Erancia and the sedentaria. So most of the members of this Erancia, they are free swimming organisms. So they swim in the marine waters uh, by using their parapodia and very few they even live in the tubes which are created by these organisms on the floor of the sea so they live in the tube uh, like structures uh, in the mud also and coming to sedentaria so most of the sedentarians they uh, create 
the tubes in the mud of the uh, ocean and uh, they live in these tubes so they are tube dwelling organisms or we say burrowing organisms but they are not uh, free swimming organisms and coming to the body so in the erancia so the body is uh, um, segmented uh, and uh, all the segments are similar except in the anterior and posterior and uh, even in the sedentaria the body is segmented but uh, the segments are not similar here so in Serencia and except this anterior and posterior segments all the segments are similar but here the segments are not similar so the segments are unlike we can say next coming to the head part of the body so the head has eyes prostomium peristomium tentacles like structures in the erancia but in sedentaria head is not uh, so distinct here so and we even don't observe the um eyes tentacles and uh, the prostomium and all these structures in head and mostly the head is uh, modified in this uh, sedentaria so it is a modified uh, structure in sedentaria the head is a modified structure then coming to the pharynx the pharynx is a protrusible pharynx in erancia but in sedentaria it is not a protrusible pharynx it is a non protrusible pharynx so that is also another important it is a non protrusible pharynx so these are the some differences important uh, between uh, erancia and uh, sedentaria so this is about the general characteristics of polychaeta and then it's the classification also so in our next video we are going to learn the next class of uh, anilida that is uh, algokita